What's, What's up, up explorers? explorers? Welcome back to our channel. We're the Choose here from Choose to Explore. We teach you guys how to see the world. And save a dollar. So we just came back from an amazing four day trip in the beautiful island of Nassau, Bahamas. So we had an amazing time and we did so much from the beautiful beaches, the people, the culture. We highly recommend going here. And today, we're gonna to be giving you 17 mistakes that you don't wanna make, so stay tuned. So the first thing you need to know is that the Bahamas is expensive, so be sure to bring your wallet. So the Bahamas is so close and it's so easily accessible from the United States of America that tourism is very high. So you can either go here from a flight like we did with JetBlue, you can take a ferry and go to one of the different ports, or if you really want to get adventurous, you can even swim here. I don't recommend it, but you definitely can do that. And being that it's an island nation with a lot of tourism, a lot of things here are imported. And when things are imported, they're going to be high in prices. So your taxis are super expensive, groceries are expensive, hotels are expensive, and gas is about $6 per gallon. But stay tuned because we're gonna give you guys a lot of tips on how you can save in the Bahamas as well. And if you guys want exclusive tips, please be sure to check out our Bahamas travel guide that you're gonna see linked in the description below. So the next thing that you need to know is that you don't need to exchange your money if you have US dollars. So coming from America, the United States of America, the Bohemian dollar and the American dollar are at a one to one ratio. So what that means is things that are one dollar, they're either in the Bohemian dollar price or the US dollar price. And every place that we went to in Nassau, Bahamas, accepted the US dollar as well as the Bohemian dollar. So if you do spend the US dollar, just know that you may or may not get US dollars back. So just be cognizant of that. So next what you need to know is that the Bahamas is more than just Nassau. The Bahamas is actually an archipelago with over 700 islands. Nassau is the capital and it's really central to the other Bohemian islands, so a lot of tourism comes here. But if you guys want to get off the beaten path and do things without a lot of other tourists, we highly recommend going to the other islands where you can do things a lot cheaper as well. I know from Southern Florida, there are boats and ferries that you can take for day trips to the Bahamas. Also, we did a tour with Shore to Shore, which we'll talk about later on in the video, where we went to two other islands in the Bahamas. So we definitely want to do more than just Nassau Bahamas on your trip if you have the time to do so. So the next thing you want to know is what are the cruise ships going to be coming? So this really pertains to my people who are staying on the island of Nassau Bahamas. So if you plan to do things and you don't want to be around a lot of people, you need to do things when the cruises are not here. So there's a really cool website called cruisemapper.com that will show you how many cruises are coming, what days, and what times. If you guys are planning on doing some activities, even some free activities that we're going to talk about later on in this video, you may or may not want to go when the cruise ships are there. So cruise ships mean a lot of people doing these things with you. So if you are trying to do different activities or even some free activities that we're going to talk about later on in this video, it's super important to know when the cruise ships are coming. But on the other hand, if there is no cruise that day, some shops, some restaurants, and some activities may not be open or they may have shorted hours. So it's good to plan your itinerary around these cruise ships. So the next important thing that you need to know about visiting the Bahamas is that they do not accept Amex cards at all. So from our experience, nobody accepted the Amex. And we went to hotels, we went to restaurants, we went to rental cars, we went to a lot of different vendors and nobody took Amex from us. So if you are coming to the islands, I would highly recommend using Visa or MasterCard. With no foreign transaction. <laughs> yes, don't want those fees. <laughs> or you guys can just use your cash as well, but if you are planning to use a card, Visa and MasterCard is the way to go. So the next thing you need to know is that there are so many beaches in Nassau, Bahamas. So I know a lot of tourists just go to Junkanoo Beach or Atlantis or Paradise Island, but trust me, there is so much more to Nassau than just those beaches. We went to different beaches in the north, in the west, in the east, in the south, and we saw so much diversity between the different beaches. So we highly recommend to go around the different beaches. And we have an entire YouTube video that shows you the different beaches that we explored and you can find out which one would be best for you. So check it out. So next you need to know that there are actually a lot of free activities. So while the Bahamas is expensive, these free activities will really save you a lot, so we highly recommend doing them. So we did a free rum cake tasting, a free rum tasting, a free tea tasting. We also saw the Queen Staircase. We also tried different chocolates. We went to a ton of different beaches. We entered different caves. 
and so many more things that you guys have to check out on our full YouTube video on Nassau Bahamas. So check that out as well in our description. So the next thing that you need to be aware of is that there is added bad tax as well as mandatory built-in gratuity into most bills. So I wasn't really surprised by the VAT tax because we're American and they tax you for everything, but the mandatory gratuity actually really threw me off. So just be cognizant of the mandatory gratuity and if the service is exceptional, you should tip on top, but just know that a lot of times it's already included. All right, so next what you need to know is that Nassau Bahamas is mainly set up for resorts. So while the island of Nassau is not small, downtown itself is pretty small. But that's where a lot of people, especially tourists, are going to be. If you go outside of the downtown area, there's not as many people and not a lot going on as well. So a lot of resorts cater to that, and if you are going to stay in a resort, be mindful of where the resort actually is situated and what is around it. So if you are looking to stay outside of downtown to save some money like we did, just be sure to factor in the cost of transportation. And we're going to talk about this next. So the next thing you need to know is that taxis are expensive. And not only that, there's a lot of variance. There are some places where you can see an actual chart, but if you don't know what the chart is, they can say any price that they want to. So not just that, but they can charge you per person, per bags. They even charge you if you have funny shaped luggage. Like if you have <laughs> golf clubs, they may charge you more. Or if you have a weird shaped duffel bag, all of these things can factor into the price. On our first day there, we went from the airport to our Verbo and it was literally an eight minute drive and they charged us $35 for the four of us for a literal eight minute drive. So just know that taxis are super expensive. So location may be super important depending on what you plan to do in Nassau Bahamas. So even though taxis are expensive, our next point is that you can actually use a jitneys to save a lot. So what is a jitney? A jitney is the Bahamas local bus. And there are many different routes that can take you all over the island. So when we first landed, we wanted to take a jitney to our Verbo. However, we landed after the jitney stopped running. So on most days, the jitney stopped running before 7 o'clock p.m. But it starts running around 6 or 7 a.m. So you do have a lot of time that you can use the jitneys. Pretty much all the rides on the island are $1.25 one way. And this is Bohemian dollars as well as the U.S. dollar. You can pay cash only on these fares. And it's best to have exact change. Also know that you have to pay for the jitneys on your way out. And it's pretty easy to find a bus stop. They're clearly marked with a big blue sign and there's also a bench in front of it. For a majority of the routes that you're gonna go on. The only thing you have to know is actually which bus is a jitney. So the jitneys really vary from bus to bus or route to route. So some have AC, some have no AC, some buses look different, some are different models, some also have windows open, and all of them have different drivers. So you just have to look in the front and it'll say the number in the front of it. For instance, the 12B bus is the one that takes you from the airport to downtown and it's actually a little bit more expensive. It's $2.50 one way. But $2.50 versus the $35 we paid, it's a no-brainer, just take the jitney. <laughs> so just be mindful that the jitneys are public transportation and there really is no set schedule on the timelines. And that really ties into our next point that Sundays are slow days. So what that means is on the island, the jitneys don't run as often on Sundays. Not only that, a lot of restaurants, grocery stores, and activities are not gonna run the normal business hours. But if there's a cruise running, that may be different. <laughs> So our next point is going to be all about rental cars. So if you're not a fan of public transportation, one way to give you freedom and flexibility on the island and also save costs from those exorbitant taxi prices is to rent a car. But one thing to be cognizant about is as an American, you do drive on the opposite side and the steering wheel is also on the opposite side. So maybe a little bit challenging right away, but you do get comfortable after a while. Also, just know that there's a lot of roundabouts in Nassau and also a lot of potholes. Be sure to stay to the left when you're driving, guys. Stay to the left. So we originally booked our rental car through Budget Rental Car and it was about $64 a day plus insurance and different fees. But we actually found a guy who rents cars for a lot cheaper and we ended up getting $50 per day that we had it and it was straight $50, no taxes and fees. And he even has the ability to drop it off and he may charge you a little bit more but I've never met a rental car place that actually drops the cars to you. So if you guys are interested in using a cheap rental car and get the drop off, please be sure to check out our guide where we have all that information linked in the description. So next we're going to go over the vendors, the taxi drivers, and all the people who are just trying to make money on the island. 
So we heard stories about how aggressive these people can be, but personally, we were there for four days and we did not experience this at all. To me, they were just people trying to make money and they were trying to get your attention, but nobody grabbed me, nobody yelled at me, nobody said anything hurtful. Honestly, they called me nice things. Like every time I went somewhere, somebody called me handsome. And if somebody called me handsome, I just may want to buy something from you. <laughs> But at the same time, you have to know how to say no. And when you say no, nobody was aggressive or angry towards us for saying no. So now we're gonna get into how you can save money at the Atlantis AquaVenture, which is their world famous water park. So the Atlantis AquaVenture is really the big draw to Paradise Island, and not only that, but Nassau Bahamas, period. The big problem with it is the day pass is $180 to $190 per person per day. So us being a family of four, that would have been $720 for us for a day pass to a water park. That's more than Disney. <laughs> so we honestly wanted to do that, but at that price range, we just could not justify it as a family of four. But we learned that there's other ways that you can save on your AquaVenture experience. So the first thing to know is that if you stay at any Atlantis hotel or resort, you get free access to the Atlantis AquaVenture. So if you are a family of four like we are, you can get a room with two beds and you can have four people and you can get free access to the Atlantis AquaVenture that way. But at the time that we were there, the rates were about $500 per room, which still would have saved us about $200 to do it that way to just book one night. But the next way you can really save is by going during the off season. So we were looking in the off season and we found rooms for around $200 per night. And if you have a group of four people, that is about $50 per person and you get a hotel and access to the AquaVenture. That's what I call seeing the world and saving a dollar. But if there is a high demand, I also recommend looking at the comfort suites on Paradise Island through Choice Hotels. I wish I would have known this when I was there, but guests of the comfort suites get access to all the amenities at Atlantis Bahamas. Not only that, they also get free breakfast. So if you are a family of four, you get free breakfast and access to the Atlantis Bahamas AquaVenture. The only downside to this is that the hotel is not as modern as the Atlantis Bahamas, but even if you don't spend the night there, just the access to the AquaVenture, which is $180 per person per day, and free breakfast is well worth it. Because if it's $200 per night at the Comfort Suites versus if you're a family of four, 180 times four is 720. Just right there, you're saving about $500 for a family of four. Another great benefit to reserving a night in one of these hotels is that you actually can get two days of activity at this Aqua Venture water park. Because check-in is at three o'clock, depending on who is running it, you may be able to get in a little bit earlier between three o'clock, but you can at least get into the water park at three o'clock of the day of your reservation. And you get the whole next day of Aqua Venture as well. So see the world save a dollar, two for the price of one, sounds good to me. Just be cognizant that if you book a same day reservation with Choice Hotels, just to go to the AquaVenture, the, on the website it says that they may not give you access. So I wouldn't recommend it, book it beforehand. So our next point is how you can save money at the Atlantis Aquarium. So the Atlantis Aquarium is actually free after five o'clock. And this is a world famous, amazing shark tank that I actually saw on Tanked. So it was a bucket list item for me to go and see this aquarium as well. Now this aquarium is amazing just by itself, even if you don't do anything in Atlantis and just do this. It is a humongous aquarium and you can go in and there's different exhibits there as well. But my real favorite part is when you go outside and you can see from above and see all the different fish, sharks, stingrays, you see all of them. And our 17th tip is how to swim with the pigs in the Bahamas. So people come all around the world just to swim with these pigs in the Bahamas. There's full day experiences, there's half day experiences, there's many options. <laughs> now we made an entire video on our experience swimming with the pigs, so please be sure to check out that video linked in our description as well. So there you guys have it, 17 tips for you guys to have the best experience here at Nassau Bahamas. So thank you guys for checking out our channel. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we appreciate all of you guys. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're watching here with us. So we'll see you guys on the next one.